Hey fellow tennis nerds, welcome to another tennis nerd video. I wanted to make a profile about Carlos Alcaraz Garcia, which is his full name. Let's call, call him Carlos Alcaraz. Um, Brad Gilbert had a pretty bad nickname for him. He usually has these pretty silly nicknames for players. Escape from Alcaraz instead of the that iconic movie Escape from Alcatraz. Not sure if that helps him remember the name, but I think Carlos Alcaraz works well as it is. Very impressive player, 18 years old, already won his first ATP Tour title, beat Gasquet in the final of Umag, just blazed through the draw, has a big game on both backhand and forehand. The forehand is probably the biggest weapon, uh, really can really generate a lot of pace there. And for a young guy, he has a lot of patience as well, like comparing him to a Shapovalov or of these types of players they, they are a bit impatient this guy he is really keen on staying in the rally keep prodding for mistakes keep working hard uh, super work ethic on the tennis court and probably off it as well you can see him take inspiration from his compatriot Rafa Nadal he is in the work ethic in the way he conducts himself uh, so I think he has a big future ahead of him. Some uh, pundits say that he will go on to win multiple Grand Slams. I think that's a bit too soon. You never know what happens. He's only 18. He's won one ATP Tour title. But yeah, he has a very bright future and uh, we'll see. But people have said big things about Zverev and, and other players in the past. Uh, Dimitrov a little bit further back and so on. And it, it's not really come to fruition. So you never know. It's so tough to start winning Grand Slam titles and at the, you know, uh, snap of a finger, which is what the three GOATs have been doing. They, they just keep winning. They just found a formula to keep winning and to get to that point is very, very difficult. Alcaraz might have it, very talented player from Murcia and uh, fun to watch, uh, pretty explosive and uh, he uses the Pure Arrow VS, the current model out today. I've reviewed it on this channel. My buddy Matthew, who plays in a lot of my videos and has done a part, part reviews uh, in some videos, he actually uses this frame um, from a recommendation from me, actually, uh, because he was playing with the blade countervail and he wanted to change it up. He then moved to the V-Core 100, uh, couldn't really find the control in that V-Core, that was the red one. It's a little bit erratic, uh, a little bit lively, which it is. It's a nice frame, but it's a little bit uh, lively, actually. And he wanted more control, but still uh, stay true to his topspin style. He has a very, very topspin-oriented game. A lot of whip, flatter backhand, and he needed a racket that could help him, but not, you know, overpower him, maybe like a normal Pure Arrow would. So uh, the Pure Arrow VS sounded like a, a natural choice uh, to me, and that's why I recommended that. Uh, he could also have gone for the Head Extreme Tour, for example, which is another very solid choice in the more control-oriented spin category, or the V-Core 98 from Yonex. Those three rackets are, are all good options for this type of player. And that adds a lot of top spin, but needs the control. And now the Aero VS actually has two very strong ambassadors in, in Ojer Ali Asim, and uh, who might be using the previous version, I'm not 100% sure about that one, but and um, Carlos Alcaraz, two very strong players with a big, very whippy forehand, modern technique, very tough for us oldies to learn this kind of technique when we're more used to the, the flatter trajectory, Eastern style forehand or even continental at times, to have that kind of whip that they create, a lot of leg work, a lot of uh, energy transfer, and rotation into the ball and uh, it's, it's a beauty to watch the the shots are amazingly hard so the pure arrow vs seems like a logical choice for him to me and i think he will stay with this stick and keep on uh, amassing some titles and wins we'll see how far he goes uh, it's also a clay clay you can be a tournament i think he has the kind of game that will work well on all surfaces pretty much uh, he can he can play well on on a hard court as well he can play well on both hard courts and clay courts and I think that's a good sign for his success and I think uh, that's something that Rafa didn't have although he had like uh, you know the star charisma he, although he had the star power and you know came up at a time where the where topspin wasn't as pronounced as it is now maybe even ushered in the era of massive topspin and uh, and worked with the game he had 
to conquer grass and hard courts while i think alcaraz is a more more versatile has all the weapons pretty much i don't see any big weaknesses at all in his game and that's why i think he's so hyped up also he's working with juan carlos ferrero he seemed to have a very strong relationship coming from the same country and maybe he shares the work ethic as you might know Sverev also worked with Ferrero but it didn't work out at all. Sverev was usually late to practice and they had some communication issues and Ferrero didn't like it so they couldn't work together and they quit their partnership after only like a f one or two months I think. Uh, while Alcaraz I think he, he uh, Ferrero has something to really work with to mold to make into a really strong player and uh, you know a threat to win Grand Slams in the future. So it will be interesting to see their partnership blossom Seems like a, a good kid with a head screwed on properly, good attitude on court, a lot of energy, uh, lots to like. One thing I noticed when he was playing in Uma was this very heavy strapping on the arm and I'm not sure what that is about. It was the hitting arm, he's a right-handed player. Not sure what that is about. Is it an injury? Does he already, has, does he already, does he already have problems with the elbow or tennis elbow or other kind of forearm related stuff? It was the whole arm. Looked like he had gone for a sleeve tattoo in one go, but I'm, I'm not sure what that is. It's a little bit worrying to see that at this young age. And the Matthew actually messaged me and said like, oh, I, maybe I should switch from the pure arrow because, uh, because it it's, doesn't seem to be very good for the elbow. It was partly a joke, but it's something you, you wonder about when you see his arm taped up. It doesn't seem to hamper his play. He won the tournament with this bandage, but I just wonder what it is. But that doesn't take away that I that I think this guy has what it takes to become a, the next world number one. I really believe he he has the biggest potential of the players we talk about these days. He is also kind of in a perfect trajectory timeline wise to be at his best or at peaking more when the other when the three goats have kind of put the rackets on the shelf and said enough. Uh, so I think he, he comes in at the right time. Medvedev, Zverev, those guys, they came in a little bit too early uh, while Djokovic was still amassing titles at a frantic pace and they still had Nadal and, and Federer to worry about in the draw. But now uh, I think Alcaraz has a few years to build up his game, make it stronger, make himself stronger and be a real threat. And then when Novak uh, stops playing, stops winning Grand Slams as, uh, as he does today, I think he is ripe to, to take a step forwards and maybe pick up a slam or two and then we'll see where we go from there. So those are my thoughts on Carlos Alcaraz. Uh, I wish him all the best in his career. It will be fun to watch and follow him. He is obviously a huge talent and uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled. If you have any other ideas for player profiles, whether it's a racket or just going through you know, a player's career or you know players that are kind of outside the the public eye, I know I picked Alcaraz is very much in the public eye, but I felt the need to to talk about him because of his, his recent title and being so young. But there are guys that we should feature that are lower ranked maybe or, or a bit more unknown. So if you have ideas, please put them in the comments below. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you need help finding a racket, check out the Tennis Nerd consultation service. If you want to support Tennis Nerd, join Patreon at patreon.com slash tennis nerd. And if you want to buy a racket or a string, go to Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe or Tennis Only. If you buy anything there through my links in the description, I get a small commission at no cost to you. Big thanks if you do. That's all. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.